<laughs> it's a rough day like today. We got worried. But how worried should we be? We've had a spectacular bull run. Everybody knows that over the past few months. So do we take this day in stride or is it some sort of garden variety profit taking? Or do we need to be more concerned? I'm always concerned about the latter. See, at moments like this, you know, what's good is I find it very helpful to take a step back and look at things through a more quantitative lens. And that's why tonight we got to go off the chart. Special Monday edition with the help of the legendary Larry Williams. He's a technician who's been trading futures, commodities and stocks since I was a kid. Williams is a nearly mythical figure on Wall Street. He's written almost a dozen books. He's got his own website, IReallyTrade.com. And he's created a slew of technical indicators, many of which are named after him that we use all the time here. Over the summer, when the market was getting slammed, we checked in with Williams, and he told us the negativity was peaking. He said it was time to go bullish. Wow, he nailed it, as the averages quickly made a remarkable comeback. Then we spoke with him again three weeks ago, and he expressed cautious optimism. He told us the averages had more room to run. But as we got closer to the end of the year, the move was likely to run out of steam. So then the question is, how close to the end of the year are we? Williams thinks right now is what's happening. Right now, the decline. He thinks the tide is turning. and It's headed a little ahead of schedule with investors increasingly turning bearish. And he predicts the bears will have the run of the place. Get this through mid-February. That said, he still thinks we could rebound from these levels. But you know what? He's recommending selling into any strength, even as he's still not backing away from the long term bull market thesis. Look at this. Let's take a look at the action in the CBOE volatility index. And that's the fear index, which is uh, it's a gauge that does a great job of reflecting the overall level of terror in the marketplace. When the VIX goes down, that means investors are feeling confident. When it goes up, that's usually a sign of fear. Today, for example, shot up nearly 17 percent. This is a remarkable move. And I know I've got some other people working on this, too, that we're going to talk about tomorrow, because I, I have to tell you, this was very disconcerting to me. And I've got to spend more time on it than usual. Williams likes the VIX because it captures the raw emotions of investors. It gives you a read on the animal spirits of the market. He also believes there's a cycle to volatility, which is why he tries to forecast that cycle based on the VIX's past behavior. And that's the red line in this chart. OK. His VIX forecast. Look at this spike. This may sound like he's making stuff up out of whole cloth, but there's a ton of rigor involved in the process. And the VIX forecast is one of the reasons Williams was able to call the bottom in August. Right now, based on the volatility cycle, he's anticipating a sustained upturn in the VIX, which tends to be very bad for the S&P 500. Based on his forecast, the volatility index should keep rising through February 11th, the day after my birthday, not that that's relevant. In other words, investors are starting to turn bearish right here, and Williams expects them to stay that way for the next couple of months. Well, that would be certainly different from what a lot of people are talking about. It's not just the VIX. I want you to take a look at this chart of the S&P 500, where Williams has done the same kind of analysis. Based on his cycle forecast, you'd expect the S&P to peak right about now. The strongest short-term cycle here has lasted for about 80 days, and it suggests the market will be under pressure through the beginning of March. So here we go. Here's where we are. Daunting, isn't it? Look at that. Right here. While these cycles can be very useful for giving you hints about the overall direction of the market, Williams likes to confirm them by digging even deeper into the technicals. I told you this guy's good. For example, why don't you take a look at the short-term chart of the S&P 500 with the dollar index, which measures the strength of the dollar versus a basket of foreign currencies. According to Williams, the dollar index tends to be a good leading indicator of what will happen to stock prices. So he's pushed it forward in time four weeks on this chart to illustrate that correlation. While a weak greenback is good for American exporters, near-term weakness in the dollar does seem to foreshadow weakness in the stock market. So here, the black stock market. Okay, he's, remember, he's, forced, he's pulling it forward to show you what's going to happen. And lately, the dollar index has sold off. Now the averages appear to be following suit. That may be one of the reasons that gold the price of gold has been screaming higher on Friday. You know I like gold. Uh, and that's perhaps as a result of... Uh, Full list of, uh, of flight from stocks. Williams is long gold. He important. He told us that that. So you know that's full disclosure. And you know I always think it's good to have some exposure to the precious metal as an insurance policy against exactly the kind of thing he's predicting. Remember we had Agnico Eagle on a couple weeks ago, and how much I like that and Sean Boyd. Finally, there's the Commodity Futures Trading Commission's uh, commitment of traders report. And this is called the COT report. That's what it's short for. Uh, Every week, the CFTC releases data on the net positions of small speculators, large speculators, and commercial hedgers. We care about the large speculators, institutional money. So take a look at this chart of the S&P futures with the commitment of traders data. You can see that they're taking a really negative turn here. 
just in the most recent weeks. This is concrete proof that money managers are getting more cautious. If they're getting more cautious, you don't want to necessarily take the other side. I know a lot of people are saying, well, I want to take the other side. No, this is about selling, okay? This is indicating selling pressure coming. Put it all together, and Williams thinks we are uh, about to get pretty ugly here. We could have one more bounce before the negativity fully takes over. But he thinks you should use any strength to ring the register. You know, I agree with him that we were due for a shakeout. I said that in the morning show. And since I expect the president to raise his tariffs on China in two weeks, it might take a little while for the pain to unfold. Here's the bottom line. The charts as interpreted by Larry Williams suggest that the market's animal spirits are turning from bullish to bearish, at least for the next few months. And he thinks you should try to sidestep the pain here. Remember, I'm going to another VIX expert tomorrow because this was so negative. I am not influencing that person. I just got to know before I tell you I am concerned beyond where I am now. My view, we did get too complacent. Stocks did need to come down to more enticing levels. But I think that may happen faster than Williams expects and not as deep as he says even as he most certainly regards the upcoming decline, once again, as a correction in a long-term bull market, which he said to me twice because he did not want people to freak out because he doesn't think this is the end. I want to go to Dave in Illinois. Dave. Dr. Kramer, happy yes. holidays, my good man uh, friend. Oh, Dolphins. well, thank you, Dave. Same to you and your family. Dolphins. Jim, within a few weeks. Why do you hurt most- me? I thought you were my most- friend. Jim, within a few weeks, the most profitable company on earth will be trading on the Saudi stock exchange. Of course, I'm talking about Saudi Aramco. Analysts anticipate it will raise more money on its IPO than current record holder Alibaba at $25 billion, set in 2014. Okay. Um. Uh, the U.S. IPO market has been struggling of late with disappointments from Uber and Lyft Beyond Meat, Zoom Video, and most recently with WeWork. So, Jim, how do you see this historic impending IPO impacting the U.S. IPO market? Uh, you know, Dave, it's so weird. They're, they're raising so little money off the actual deal, even though there's a large size, that I think it's not going to have the impact we thought. Uh, I do know they want to diversify away from oil. I think they want a currency to do that. Uh, of course, we got to stay away from this only because we stay away from anything fossil fuel because they're not working. Thank you for calling me doctor. Let's go to Adam. Oh, and we're talking about a state, the Nigerian state in Minnesota. Adam. Mr. Kramer. Yes. Oh, yeah. From Minnesota. It's a pleasure speaking with you. I was watching your show last week about the bulls, the bears, and with the stock market doing so well, not being a pig. I don't want to be a pig. I want to take some profits. My question is, what do you recommend I do with the profits? So I put them back in the market or into the No, no. Look, you know, we have a club, ActionLearnsPlus.com club. We have raised about $350,000, which is a lot of money. And what are we doing with that money? Side line. Side line. Why? Because we, too, agree with Larry Williams that short-term things are going to be turbulent. It's just that I think short-term is shorter term than Larry does. But Larry is the king. And I had to tell you what he's thinking. Again, tomorrow, alternative, but maybe the guy agrees with him. That's how concerned I am. I don't want to panic anymore. Market indicators are signaling a degree of investor bearishness that could carry over into the next few months, according to Williams. My take? Hey, look, it's about time stocks came down to more attractive levels, but I'm not committing new capital yet unless I take more money out first, and that's for the trust. I can't trade stocks. Much more mad money at cybersecurity spending is expected to exceed $1 trillion over the next five years. As cyber attacks become more prevalent, can a company like CyberArk protect your data and your portfolio from the Russians, from the North Koreans, from the Chinese, all of them trying to disguise each other? I'm going to talk to the CEO. Then it's a company whose shares have more than doubled this year and effectively quintupled since the end of 2017. I'll reveal this under-the-radar name just ahead. And all your calls rapid fire in tonight's edition of The Lightning Round. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.